Hi everyone, I'm Heather Wen, a retired nurse practitioner and the founder and practitioner at Arizona Healing Alternatives. On this channel, you'll find several videos, what I like to call aha moments, where we'll be discussing issues that impact your health. So whether you decide to use Western medicine, alternative medicine, or even a mix of both, I'm passionate about you knowing what your options are. So I grew up watching The Love Boat. Should I admit that? I guess that shows my age. But basically, I grew up watching it. I thought it was so cute, although everything got solved like in 30 minutes to an hour. But basically, we're gonna be talking about kind of like The Love Boat. Which cabin are you in? Are you in the falling in love aspect of the cabin? Or are you in the, oh my gosh, I'm in something I shouldn't be in and needing to get off that boat right away? Love series is not for kids. All of my videos I put on YouTube are not for children, but especially this is not for kids. The disclaimers are not for kids. And also once I've always said in like my other communication videos, I am not a licensed clinical psychologist or psychiatrist or marriage and family counselor, I don't have that background. I have a background in helping people as a nurse practitioner and a background now in emotional reprogramming uh, through applied kinesiology and hypnosis. But I am gonna put in this series uh, slides up because they came from some very, very good articles on the subject. And this particular website also takes people to where you can get help. And I'm gonna be putting those things up because if it's beyond what I can do, I want you to know where you can get some help. So stay tuned for our love series and figuring out on the love boat which cabin you're in. So now as we venture into part three of the love series, we have been going through all sorts of different things. The first part we talked about like definitions of love and what you want out of love. The second thing was all the positive things with the brain and stuff from that Harvard study. I'm also going to be, and I'll put up the, the, um, the link to that as well going to continue with that where it talks about in that article from Harvard University it talks about things about the negative aspects what when hormones go awry or things what like are that the negative aspects of love all right well we talked about that giddy and wonderful sensation and all the hormones in the last video we talked about all the hormones that are released and the brain's dopamine receptors that wants pleasure and that's what it's designed for so what happens when um, those sensations start happening, but yet there can be some negative effects. So what are the negative effects? Well, sometimes when you see somebody, you get so many butterflies that you get nauseated or you throw up or you get nervous or whatever. So those are some of the mild negative aspects of some of these hormones that go in the, that are racing. But also what about people who are, even when we talk about being on phones, being online, doing things that are constantly feeding back to that brain, the dopamine hit that it wants more and more and more, almost like that adrenaline, because we talked about dopamine and norepinephrine or epinephrine and adrenaline, right? We talked about that that's kind of good because that's excitement, but then if it's overboard, it can almost wear down a body and exhaust you, as well as in some cases, it's fascinating, falling in love can make you kind of stupid <laughs> and what that means is is that there are certain centers of the brain like serotonin and different things that that are related to depression or things like that that when some of these things are activated it can actually decrease your body's ability to sense danger interesting so falling in love sometimes you'll do things, some people say, oh my God, I just got swept away. I just got swept away. I didn't realize what was going on. I got swept and I got caught up in the moment, in the heat of the moment. There's a reason for that because when some of those chemicals go off, it turns off other chemicals in the brain that decrease your senses to sense danger or to sense things like that. And so it can lead into something that can be not so positive. And in the next couple of videos, we're gonna be talking about where that can happen, but I want you to have that background on knowing that some of these chemicals, when they fire off, other chemicals go in response. And when that happens, that's why. You know, people are like, oh, you know, it's just how come I'm doing what I'm doing? I see that all the time in my practice where I know better, I know better, but then, oh my gosh, it just happens. That's chemical. 
that is chemical and it can be controlled if you know what's going on. Why it's important to know what's going on with all these things from whether it's giddy or like I said, the, the hardest part is sometimes when that dopamine hits is that constant, oh, needing to play another video game or needing to do another thing. Those kind of things are the adrenaline junkie thing. There, everything in life is a balance, right? So but what I always tell people is what tends to be running all the time, which we're gonna be talking about starting now and into the next two videos, is gonna be about trusting your gut. That your gut, and we've talked about that in other videos, your gut is 99.9% .9 right at the time. So even when you sit there and you're like, you know, it was weird, I sort of got swept away, but my gut was telling me something was wrong. So the gut, 99.9%, .9%, you've got to trust your gut when these things because that's what's going to lead you because there's the heart and the head and who does what and what are we going to do to talk ourselves out of it and all the chemicals and all the hormones and all that stuff that are running. But once you know that that's what's going on, it can help you navigate and use this more once you trust your gut more and you can use that to help you stay in that healthy kind of love and healthy kind of attraction and healthy kind of attachment instead of going into an area where things are not so healthy and we're going to cover that in parts four and five <music>